Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Deciphering My Experience. My name is Eric, and I have some information I want to share with you today, some articles that I found in regards to directed energy weapons and what's been the State of the Union as of late. But first and foremost, as always, I would like to thank everybody who has been supporting the channel so far up until this point. And I noticed that I am teetering on 2,500 subscribers here at YouTube. So I would really appreciate if you guys can help me just push forwards a little bit, get past that 2,500 mark, and hopefully be able to massage that algorithm a little bit more fast and furiously in the future. So the uh, more viewers we get out there, the more information we can share. So please subscribe, like, comment. And most importantly, share this information somewhere so that other people can see it as well. It's important that we get it out there. But uh, as far as the matter at hand today, we have the first article that I would like to show everybody is this one here, where it says the White House recognizes hypersonic directed, hi, I'm sorry, the White House recognizes hypersonics Directed energy as critical technologies, which is kind of what I've been trying to let everybody know is that the weapons of war have changed, the war is ongoing, and most of us can't even imagine what's actually going on out there right now. But here we go. The White House has added five new technology areas to its list of critical and emerging technologies, including hypersonic capabilities, directed energy, renewable energy generation and storage, nuclear energy, and financial technology. It's going to be some interesting waging of war in the not-too-distant future when we have financial instruments of war. The list of critical and emerging technologies, or CETs, was released Tuesday by the National Security Council and the National Science and Technology Council's Fast Track Action Subcommittee on Critical and Emerging Technologies. The, fo the update follows and closely reflects the key technologies included in the Pentagon's new science and technology vision, which was signed February 1st under the Secretary of Defense for Research and Engineering, Heidi Hsu. It also comes just days after top Pentagon leaders convened a meeting with defense industry executives to discuss the importance of moving quickly to field hypersonic technology. The CET list is not meant to be a strategy, but will inform a future strategy for U.S. technological competitiveness and national security, the report notes. It also serves as a resource to promote U.S. technological leadership and for co cooperation with international allies. Within each CET, the report highlights core technologies or subfields. Under hypersonic technologies, it identifies propulsion, aerodynamics, and control. Materials, defense, and detecting, tracking, and control as key focus areas. For directed energy, those core technologies include lasers, high power microwaves, and particle beams. Along with the additions to the list, the White House update eliminates several technologies included in the Trump administration's 2020 National Critical and Emerging Tech Strategy. Those deletions include advanced conventional weapons technology, agricultural technology, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear mitigation technologies, and distributed ledger technologies. Well, there you have it, folks. The Pentagon is paying more attention to the topic, and I think that you should as well. I've been trying to let folks know what I found out is going on down at the South Pole Station. I've put documentation out there. Please make sure you go to deciphering.tv. Go to the archives section and find out for yourself. Look at the DOM document and look at uh, ooh, the one listed for interstellar communication device is in there as well because that's what's really going on at the South Pole. Things are uh, a lot more complex than what we've been told. So I'm just trying to share that information. And uh, let's get over to the next article. I'll pull that one up. Uh, that should be right there. Ta-da. Okay. So since the White House is concerned about what's been going on in the world with directed energy, Let's show you what some of their concerns are. This article here is in regards to the new fighter capability. Oh, lost my mouse here. Come on, where'd you go? Oh, you're way over there. Come on. Oh, because 
I have the wrong one on. I'm on the wrong screen, folks. There we go. So this one is uh, China's domestically developed J-20 stealth fighter jet could in the future be equipped with directed energy weapons. And it can also spawn variants for early warning, unmanned flight, and drone control. Military experts predicted after the aircraft received concentrated media coverage over the past week. I believe our industrial departments can turn some of our ideas into reality, including those from the current trend of aviation main battle equipment. Wang Mingliang, a Chinese military expert, was quoted as saying in a China Central Television program on Saturday. The J-20 could be equipped with directed energy weapons or could be fitted with more powerful radar and fire control systems and become a small early warning aircraft, Wang predicted. It is also possible that the J-20 could become capable of unmanned flight, Wang said, noting that the J-20 could also conduct coordinated operations with drones by leading them or commanding a drone swarm in combat. The J-20 is now equipped with domestically developed engines, but is expected to get even more powerful domestic engines in the future. And this will enable the J-20 to carry more payload and carry out more types of missions, Wang predicted. Wang made the remarks when asked about his expectations on the future development of the J-20 after the program rounded up the recent concentrated media coverage of the J-20, including intense nocturnal combat drills and interviews with pilots. In early 2020, state broadcaster CCTV reported that China was developing an airborne laser attack pod. Chinese defense firms have also publicly displayed laser defense weapon systems at exhibitions like the LW-30, which could use a directional emission high-energy laser to intercept aerial targets. Lasers are a great tool for aerial interception because there is no time delay, but it requires a large amount of energy to be effective, and that is the issue that must be addressed for it to be mounted on an aircraft, analysts said. Foreign media reported in November 2021 that the twin-seat variant of the J-20 made its maiden flight at the time. An extra pilot on the twin-seat fighter jet could be utilized in more complicated combat missions, like to control loyal wingman-style drones, which will accompany the manned fighter in flight and carry different types of payloads for a wide variety of missions, including ground and surface attacks, air-to-air -air combat, and electronic dis disruption. Wang Yan, chief editor of Beijing-based aerospace knowledge magazine, told the Global Times in a previous interview, Wang Yan predicted that combat data from the second seat could be gathered, analyzed, and used to train artificial intelligence, which could eventually replace the second pilot. These are in line with general trends of warplane development worldwide, as countries like the U.S. are also exploring some of the related technologies. Another Beijing-based military expert told the Global Times on Sunday, requesting anonymity. China is making concrete steps to make these sci-fi-looking concepts a reality, the expert said. Beyond upgrades for J-20s, even better warplanes of a next generation are expected to replace them in the future, analysts said. Well, there you have it, folks. I mean, this is the way of the world now. Directed energy weapons are the weapons. It's no longer about explosions. It's no longer about nuclear bombs. These are old conversations. It's old hat. The conversation is way more beyond the imagination of most people nowadays, which is why I'm trying to explain what's going on. Um, I do have one more here that I could probably pull up. Let's see. This one's kind of interesting as well. <clears throat> uh, that could be the last type one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so... I got this other one here that I, I actually just came across. I didn't go into it, but I'll just cover some of the highlights here. Uh, DARPA Prep's five-year MELT program, very appropriately titled for a laser beam project, to develop high-energy lasers for directed energy applications and drone swarms. So like they stated in the Chinese aspect, they're looking to take these planes out and have them be lead for a whole swarm of stuff. So this is, um, we're going to see that the, future of conflict is going to be more of a blitzkrieg of technology and a means to mitigate it as fast and furiously as it shows up. 
uh, as we see here in the highlight screen, the deep magazines of laser weapon systems are ideally suited to counter swarms of hostile unmanned aircraft systems, says DARPA. What they mean by deep magazines is unlimited ammunition. As long as your power supply is there, uh, you're not really reloading. You just keep refiring. The proliferation of small, low-cost unmanned aircraft systems on the battlefield requires a layered defense that includes low-cost directed energy DARPA MELT program, January 2022. MELT aims to exploit technologies such as novel semiconductor fabrication techniques, coherent beam combining, photonic integration, 3D integration, and packaging. DARPA seeks innovative proposals in the area of high-energy lasers, Sources for directed energy applications. I mean, for defense against them, drone swarms, one of the things that I think will be most promising is directed energy in one form or another, says Dr. Michael Griffin in 2018. Well, folks, I mean, maybe if they didn't make the drones, we wouldn't need the laser beams to shoot them down. Where does this end? It's just unstoppable. We often think about directed energy as large lasers, but we also have high-powered microwaves, which can be very effective. Yeah, absolutely. There's all kinds of directed energy weapons that are on the playing field now that are highly effective. The counter-drone system, which has both commercial and military uses, can be used to stop, identify, redirect, land, or take total control of a target unmanned aerial vehicle. DOJ indictment, January 2022. Interesting quote. The goals and timelines of MELT are aggressive, says the DARPA MELT program. A planned government team consisting of John Hopkins University, Applied Physics Lab, the Office of Naval Research, Air Force Research Laboratory, and the U.S. Army will execute in parallel to the performer performers throughout the five-year program, DARPA MELT. That's basically what's going on in the world, folks. There is just a fury of new technology that is um, being applied all over this planet that most people are not paying that much attention to. So I just think that we need to understand what the actual threats are, not what the gatekeepers want us to think. Um, speaking of gatekeepers, um, everybody keeps always telling me when I'm growing when I speak about Antarctica, that I should reach out to Linda Moultenhow. Well, I did, and it didn't go very well. Apparently, Linda Moultenhow doesn't respect the experience of a plumber that stayed at the South Pole Station, and uh, she only wants to hear from, a, I guess, a physicist is how she put it. So it was very disappointing having uh, communicated with her and having all of my information just completely discounted and frowned upon because apparently I don't hold a large enough title for Miss Linda Moulton Howe. So maybe I'll, uh, I'll do a video or a conversation on that one. But since I brought up the concept of gatekeeper and the uh, frustrations that I've had as of late, I will just let everybody know that I will continue to do due diligence to break down the walls of compartmentalization and kick all the gatekeepers in the shins because I'm pretty tired of all the misinformation and disinformation. And I'm sure all of you folks are very tired of it as well. There's a lot of folks out there that don't really have proof, don't really have any experience, but for some reason they um, they get a lot of time on air. And as we learned recently with what happened, unfortunately, to James Rink, there are folks out there that are just playing games in the mix and muddying the waters because they'll just straight up lie. So I am here to take my experience, which is a truth, which can be proven, which is factual, which is documented. Go to deciphering.tv, check the archive section, because this is all verifiable. So I want everybody to know what's really going on in the world and not just the stories that the gatekeepers are putting out there. So we'll get this done. It's going to be a blast. I know that everybody has been uh, working behind the scenes and helping me, and I want to give my hat off to all the folks that have been trying to grow this channel. Everything is happening. We're moving forwards. And with that being said, I'm going to... Let everybody listen to the next tune that I have in the lineup from our new musical sponsor, I guess I would say, which is the band Dion Vox has afforded me some new music and will be functioning with the website to help with more production. I want to do some stuff, healing things, and 
meditative things. So music uh, calms the savage beast. So with that being said, let's listen to some Dion Vox. hearing it on my headphones that's what happened because i don't have headphones on so i have to trust that it's on so let's try that again uh ladies and gentlemen the sounds of dion vox Save me, help me, raise me, teach me to be free. Brother, shield me, guide me, healing, teach me what I see. Father, praise me, show me, neighbor, you teach me what I need. Lover, crave me, do me, daze me, love me, cause I'm me. I need 